already, but uh, we already had some uh, uh, remote and hybrid uh, call conferences. So this is not for us an experiment, but it is always an experiment because we are not in our university and uh, each time we have to check uh, uh, cables, uh, audio, videos, uh, and so on. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us uh, in this uh, event. We will have about 160 presentations. I can uh, confess you that uh, it is really an interesting event. We will have uh, three invited lectures. I can confess you that. Uh, Professor Firrao from uh, Politecnico di Torino, uh, Professor Correa from Portugal, and Professor Leo Marsavina from Romania. And uh, Professor Firrao and Professor Marsavina will be here in presence. Instead, uh, our friend Jose will be in remote. And uh, this is the style of this conference. Uh, just an important detail, uh, you already had your presentation, and all of you had the time, I hope, uh, to watch this presentation. Uh, I must tell you that they are all really interesting. So congratulations for your work. And uh, this uh, conference will be focused on the discussions. And uh, it is my pleasure to say that we already had this experience uh, last year with the uh, European Start Intelligence Society. We had a virtual conference with about 450 presentations. And uh, it was really an interesting event. And so you will be asked as a speaker to have a very short presentation with the core of your uh, work, one minute, two minutes, and then we will have a discussion. I'm sure you will enjoy this event, and thank you so much for joining us. So let's start with this uh, hybrid conference with our first uh, chairperson, chairwoman, and it is my pleasure to introduce you, uh, Professor Sabina Vantadori, that will be will chair this uh, first session of the IGF 26. Thank you so much. Professor Sabina Vantadori, that will be will chair this first session. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Sabrina Vantadori. Uh, we can start with uh, the section number one. Uh, the first presentation is entitled Effects of Graphene on Fractured Behavior of 3D Printed and is presented by Sergio uh, Cicero. Yes. Hello, um, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, what we have done in this uh, work is to to see um, what happens when we introduce graphene on 3D printed PLAs uh, with three different raster orientations, uh, 0, 90, 30, minus 60, and 45 minus power 25. With the addition of graphene being fixed at uh, 1%, one percent with uh, one uh, weight percentage, because this is the commercial grade. Uh, for no other reason than the commercial grade was uh, that was one percent. Um, the main uh, findings uh, have been uh, has been the, the main finding has been the observation that uh, graphene has negligible effect in raster orientation uh, 90, uh, 0, 90, but has a very significant effect on uh, 45 uh, minus 45 with the third raster orientation being in the middle. So uh, the addition of graphene in the same PLA has different effects depending on the um, raster orientation being analyzed. And this has been justified by uh, CM, CEM observations. Fractal micromechanisms uh, barely change in raster orientation 0, 90 and completely change in 45 minus 40. So th these are the main um, points of the research. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, any question or comments? Thank you very much. Okay, thank okay. You. I have two questions. Uh, question. uh, why uh, the, ulti the ultimate tensile strain is lower for the PLA uh, plus graphene specimens? Uh, that is how the graphene acts uh, on such a strain. 
Yeah, it looks like uh, yeah the, the ductility of the material uh, is uh, reduced when you add graphene, which is not like strange, uh, and it has been reported in literature in other occasions. But the the, the, the strength increases, and given that toughness is you know a compromise between one and another, the, the final result is that the, the refractive toughness generally increases when you add graphene, especially in certain raster. Uh, but I mean, uh, one thing is ductility, which is reduced when you add graphene, and the other thing is uh, toughness, which generally increases. But I mean, uh, one thing is ductility, which is reduced when you add graphene. Okay, thank you. The second question is Can you explain us why the graphene addition is able to change the fracture mechanism only in the case of uh, two raster orientation examines? Yeah, as I mentioned, we have observed the, the, the fractal micro mechanisms, and uh, um, yeah, yeah, as I mentioned, they basically they don't change in one raster orientation, 0 90, and then the fractal uh, toughness remains basically constant. And uh, uh, the, the, the fractal micro mechanisms become uh, much more. Uh, let's say, non-linear in the other two raster orientations. The reason why uh, this happens is still open for us. I mean, uh, we are working on that. It's a reason uh, good question. Why uh, this happens is still open for Other questions or comments? The reason is good question. Why this happens is still open OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. The next presentation uh, is entitled uh, 3D Lattice uh, Based uh, Structural Elements for Industrial Application, and uh, it's presented by Alexei uh, Fidoranko. Uh, good morning. Um, may I share my uh, one slide? Okay. Uh, good morning. Um, may I share? Okay. I see it. One slide. Okay. Uh, so, um, good morning. Um, may I share? I see it. In, in, in this uh, work, uh, we uh, consider two cases for industrial application of uh, lattice structures. So, this is not, not 3D printed. Uh, we can make it using stamping and welding. So uh, the first one, uh, the idea so is to uh, remove uh, reinforcement uh, bars and uh, to use uh, such a lattice so, structure. So uh, it is one, filled uh, by is concrete uh, between uh, outer sheets. And, uh, to use and uh, using uh, finite uh, element uh, analysis, uh, we, um, we found that um, and, uh, uh, we can uh, increase uh, the stiffness analysis, and the strength of uh, construction uh, plate uh, with uh, uh, the uh, same uh, mass the of uh, metal parts. And uh, uh, the second uh, case uh, is the idea to uh, use a lattice structure for a pressure bulk bulk it of uh, airplane. Uh, so uh, you can see the proposed structure, and uh, we compare it uh, with uh, the traditional. Uh, so, uh, part, you can see it and uh, in, in the focus of uh, this study is uh, with, uh, damage uh, tolerance uh, analysis, so part, we, uh, and, uh, we assume that uh, there is a crack uh, uh, in the structure according to some flight uh, standards. Uh, and uh, we uh, again, we found that using uh, the proposed uh, structure, uh, and, uh, the uh, mm, stress intensity is uh, with uh, the lattice uh, bulk heat uh, is uh, mm, are, are reduced if we compare it uh, with a traditional one. Uh, so that's it in, in brief. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And any questions or comments? Thank you. Okay, I have uh, okay, a couple of questions, questions for you. Uh, is it possible uh, to optimize okay, for the lattice? 
Um, another parameter different uh, to complaints. And which parameter uh, can be optimized? Could be optimized. Uh, it is possible to optimize uh, the second one, uh, stre strength, uh, of course. So we can optimize uh, strength. Uh, it is possible. Uh, but usually it is, uh, mm, it is uh, connected. So, so I, I believe if we optimize the stiffness, the strength is also okay. So, I believe we can. And did you try to optimize the other parameters? No, no, in this work, no, not on the stiffness. Did you try to optimize the other parameters? Okay. No, and uh, no, um, which type uh, of link uh, did you use between the lattice okay. and the skins uh, in plates under bending? Uh, well, I assume it can be uh, welded uh, using welding. It is. Uh, uh, well, I assume it can be uh, well, well, well done for connection. From the numerical point of view. Ah, ah numerical. Yes, okay. okay. It is. Uh, numerical point of view. Uh, yes. yes. Well, well done. It is uh, tied. So this, this is ah, stiffly. Uh, they are tied together between. Yes. It is. And did you try to model other type of links? They are tied together between. Sorry. For example, take into account uh, shear stresses. Uh, um, in, in this work, uh, example, no, but uh, I, I think it's possible, of course. Uh, so mm -hmm. in, this, in this work, we assume uh, only this, uh, this is the no, first step, we assume uh, I think it's steep time. Uh, so mm -hmm. in this Without work, contact. We only, uh, this is okay. Step, we Other questions or comments? Okay, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Other questions or comments? Okay, thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Um, the next presentation is entitled uh, Quasi Static Behavior of uh, 3D uh, Printed Lattice Structures of Various Scales. And uh, it is presented by Ju Xiu. Uh, please. Okay, thank you for introducing me. Uh, can I share one slide? Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and okay. share. This. Thank you for introducing me. Okay, uh, can everybody can see slide? my slide? Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead. So uh, this yes. is the, yeah, okay. Uh, so the title of this uh, presentation is What the Static Behavior of uh, 3D Printed uh, this yes. the, okay. 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 So in this work, uh, we use uh, PLA printed lattice um, for different scales. And uh, it's all uniform lattice, which means uh, the unit cell is constant instead of uh, gradient. And uh, we had uh, three categories for each uh, cases. So we studied the scale effect, which is on the constant porosity for the lattice. This is the first case. And we also studied the uh, geometry effect, which we had the constant uh, wall thickness for and each lattice. The, and also we uh, studied the wall thickness effect, effect and we, the in that case, the, would be, the lattice would be constant uh, unit and size and the cubic the size. And then we, we plot the, the uh, string stress the data together uh, and also we plot the, the cumulative energy absorption per unit volume versus string strain in order to compare these mechanical behaviors. So uh, detailed results are shown in these figures, and uh, I have mechanical. Uh, can we? Can I show so, another slide? Uh, detailed results are shown in these figures, and uh, I have. Okay, I'm just gonna uh, can we talking. Can we um, so. Uh, so we found that uh, all those lattices um, have a similar um, compressive behavior, um, so except uh, two of them. Uh, all the curve uh, shows some valleys and peaks, which uh, indicates some um, possible buckling behavior. 
we uh, we we need to further analysis do further analysis for the Falklands, so we're not that sure yet. And also for the uh, cumulative energy, uh, it seems like um, before all the densification points of the lattice, so all the uh, curves showed the almost linear trend for that. So this is our uh, main conclusion for that. Yep. Okay. okay. So Any questions or comments? Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, did you try to test uh, specimens uh, characterized by other values uh, of the raster angles? Okay. Uh, you use plus minus 35. Yes. Yes, we, we haven't, because in this case, all the parameters, okay, uh, uh, all the process, print, printing process parameters are yes. fixed. We, we so have yes, uh, plus case, minus 45, uh, as we uh, found in the literature, uh, it is the most, for PLA uh, specimen, uh, for PLA filament, it is the most uh, resistant uh, to um, mechanical um, behaviors so far. So in this case, we only tested plus minus 45. So we haven't tested other raster angles yet. Yeah, pl plus uh, for some lattice printing, uh, especially for the very thin words, if you look at if you yeah, do the slicing in the software, you will see for some uh, words will only have one line. So it doesn't really matter if we have a plus minus 45 or minus plus minus 90. So it, it will be the same for those that. So maybe for the thicker word thickness, that will vary. Yeah. So it will be the same for those that. So maybe for the thicker word thickness. Okay. I have question. Yes. Uh, why the ultimate comp uh, compressive why the uh, you ultimate yeah. compressive strength mm -hmm. is os almost the same for the t uh, for the three series tested, whereas the maximum one is greater for larger structures. Uh, which, which case are you, are you talking about? Because I had three different categories. Is it under constant um, porosity, which case are you talking about? thickness or constant cubic size? Under constant um, porosity, which case um, are you what thickness? No, um, uh, um, the test uh, are those uh, um, uh, are those sure here in your picture. Yes. And um, I observe, for example, in the first uh, uh, graphs, uh -huh. you see that the ultimate is yeah yeah is the yes. same for the three series, whereas the maximum one is not the same. Oh, oh, you saying okay for for the strain is is the same, but the maximum stress. It's, it's not the same. Oh, okay. Is that, is that what you're talking yeah. about? Okay, okay. Uh, so for this, uh, we so we suspect that uh, so these lattices have uh, the similar uh, compressive behavior. So as you can see from the uh, curve, so all of them had only. Uh, one peak, which is the so ultimate uh, uh, compressive uh, strength, uh, and only had so one valley here. Only, uh, so, which means the failing mechanism uh, for all the lattices uh, are uh, uh, global instead of um, buckling layer so by layer. Which means the failing mechanism for all the lattices are okay. uh, global. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Layer by layer. The okay. Uh, the next presentation uh, is entitled uh, Finite Element Analysis of uh, ABS uh, Printed uh, Lattice Structure, structure uh, and uh, is presented by uh, Darko, uh, Do Darko Doma, uh, Domia, um, Dobianovic. Okay. Uh, good morning to everybody. I, I will do that instead of dark. My name is Rajan Kozak. I'm the first author of the paper, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here with you and special congrats to Francesco. I think it's really nice event and you are going so fast uh, to, to, through this session, so it's really great. <clears throat> uh, just a few words about the work. Uh, as a group of authors, we investigated recently four structures 
particularly lattice structures, originally designed by PTC Creo and made by plastics, as in this work, but also metallic, as we are doing now in our current research, but maybe we will <coughs> present some results in the next conference. Uh, it should be emphasized that all the structures are printed, as in the previous paper, and the more highlights are on the possible application of ABS plastics for sound or, or noise or energy absorption. And this is why we conducted experiments, it means uh, specimens which are subjected to compression size by and 60 per 70 per 80 millimeters, and we measured the force and the displacement with the classical experiment. But the focus was much more on the finite element analysis. We tried to do, to do the same by, by, by this kind of analysis and to trying to, to try to assess the mesh sensitivity by, by kind of uh, because it is, as you know, probably a very, very large number of elements and it is one of the problems by finite element analysis of such structures. So some preliminary results we, we shown for maximum principal stresses, displacements and reaction forces in, in the presentation. You, you show this probably if you want, you can see that. But uh, much more details will be presented in the paper, which we will submit until the deadline. So there is maybe not so many details but regarding, for, for example, some legends for stresses or displacements because it is just preliminary results. But, but if you have some questions, we are ready to answer. No problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? No problem. Thank you. Okay. Um, Everything is on you. <laughs> no, no, I have two questions. Okay, no <laughs> problem. Thank you. Uh, did you try to perform uh, numerical analysis by using uh, a cell with okay, no an irregular shape? No, uh, this is the specimen of a regular shape. So, but it is a quadratic tetrahedral, so it is not a problem. It's free meshing, but the problem is really a large number of elements. This is the problem. So, we are trying, for example, to find the the, the best size uh, to reduce the CPU time, because we are talking about I don't know two millions of elements. So you need a good workstation to do that. And for irregular shapes, for probably it would be much, much more work, so, so it is not so easy, but it is possible, why not? For, we are now doing just regular shapes. Irregular shapes, for probably it would be much, much more work, so it is not so easy. Okay, and the second question is, did you experimental measure the stress-strain curve implemented in the numerical model, or uh, yes. Yes. in which it's way yes. it yes. has it been set? Uh, before the <coughs> before the numerical analysis, we, we tried to do practical experiments for the filament just to be sure about the sigma uh, epsilon diagram which will be implemented in the numerical analysis. So yes, the, the answer was yes. And uh, the results we hope will be because of that also, I think much, much more better and much more followed by, by the really structures what, 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 we, what we have in the, in the reality. So we hope that it will be better when we have the, the numerical results which are based on real experiments. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Which are based on real experiments. So I I have one question. Can yes, I please. Ask? Oh, perfect. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to ask um, for uh, uh, numerical simulation. Yes, yes. Uh, how did you yes. get uh, the value for yeah, Poisson ratio? Because um, I also want to try to do the yes. numerical simulation, uh, but I found a hard time to get the right uh, or appropriate Poisson ratio for the simulation. Because otherwise, if I um, get something else, then I uh, find it uh, it doesn't match for the so to be honest with you it is it is from the artist of the of the producers of materials but it is possible okay. to measure it also as you know it is the minus value of the of the strain in the perpendicular way and in the vertical way okay so it is okay. possible but you should measure that so it is okay so okay so like for example by aramis or by some other method it is possible so it is possible but you should measure but very nice question okay so okay thank you other questions or comments? Okay, thank you again. Thank you. Other questions or comments?
Uh, the next presentation is entitled Effects of Polymeric Fillers on Poison, uh, poison Function of Additively um, Manufactured uh, Obsectives. And it is presented by Thomas Doctor. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, uh, my uh, my uh, presentation is a part of, uh, of uh, uh, research uh, conducted uh, by uh, uh, my, uh, research group uh, at the uh, Czech Technical University in Prague. Uh, and uh, currently we uh, focus on uh, auxetic uh, structures, auxetic lattices, uh, and their uh, use uh, for uh, impact uh, energy absorption uh, applications. And uh, this uh, work. Uh, was uh, uh, focused on effect of uh, the polymeric fillers, and, uh, which are uh, the auxetics equipped with uh, to enhance uh, the uh, impact uh, resistance and uh, capabilities to absorb the, uh, the impact energy. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, this uh, tests uh, were done on. Uh, Three types of auxetics, which was made uh, by uh, SLS printing, uh, additive manufacturing from uh, metal. Uh, it was made from steel alloy, and uh, two types uh, of uh, fillers were uh, were tested uh, in combination with this, uh, these types of auxetics uh, to achieve uh, really uh, high strain rates, uh, which occur on uh, during dynamic uh, dynamic impacts. Uh, we used uh, split Hopkinson pressure bar, uh, where uh, we achieved strain rates uh, up to four thousand strains per second, uh, and uh, the the main results uh, were uh, the increase of uh, strain energy density uh, in all types of auxetics uh, in both types uh, of uh, filling uh, compared to the reference uh, non-filled uh, lattices. Uh, and uh, this work was focused on the effect of uh, the fillers uh, on uh, Poisson's ratio because uh, the filler is non-auxetic and, non and when it's filled uh, into uh, the auxetic uh, lattice, uh, the auxetic uh, nature is uh, slightly suppressed. And, uh, uh, the focus of the research was uh, how much, uh, and uh, this uh, the result showed that uh, the suppression of uh, of the auxetic na auxetic nature uh, was observable in both types of uh, of the uh, filler, uh, and uh, even the uh, the auxetic which uh, which we used was uh, relatively stiff as it uh, it was printed from uh, steel alloy and. Uh, uh, the strut thickness was uh, relatively high. Uh, then, even in this case, uh, the separation of the auxetic nature uh, was uh, was observable observable in all uh, groups of Then, even in this case, the separation of the auxetic nature was. Okay. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Okay. Thank you. Can you explain us uh, why um, for the auxetic number two, the higher the higher stray energy density values are obtained uh, for the polymeric filler and not for for gelatin? There was a graph. Number number two, uh, two. It was the three two in order of presentation. Yeah. Yes, uh, the three dimensional reentrant uh, reentrant uh, uh, structure, the inverted honeycomb in uh, three dimensions. Uh, it was uh, uh, the reason uh, is that uh, in this type of uh, of auxetics, uh, the relative. Uh, uh, the, the porosity the por or uh, the ratio between uh, ratio between, uh, between the uh, voids and uh, the solid matter uh, is uh, the the highest. This this type of auxetic uh, has uh, uh, the highest uh, relative porosity, and uh, the the 
the high. Uh, this enables uh, high uh, high level of action uh, of uh, of the filler uh, because of uh, of the high the higher portion of uh, of the filler in, uh, filled with uh, uh, in the lens. Because uh, in the other case, uh, the opposite happens. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your last sentence. Sorry. For the other two cases examined, the opposite happens. Yeah? The filler, the gelatin is, uh, um, gives uh, the higher, high, higher uh, stray energy density values or not. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, the the reason uh, the reason is uh, yeah, in the uh, different type of uh, of uh, character of the filler because uh, the organic gelatin uh, is uh, non-porous, so it uh, yeah, it fills uh, from the lowest uh, lowest portion. It fills uh, fills the void and can uh, can is able to act uh, to uh, enhance uh, the properties. But uh, the the pores uh, in the polyurethane uh, foam uh, are uh, in their dimensions uh, quite comparable uh, with the size of voids uh, in the outsetics, uh, two-dimensional outsetics. So only in the three-dimensional outsetics it can act uh, properly. In the outsetics. Okay, thank you. The second question is um, why the poison number moves uh, from negative to positive only in the case of uh, uh, polymeric filler in 2D and 3D, and 3D reentrant uh, outsetics? I remember a graph from your presentation where the, pos the poison numbers move to negative to positive only in some cases that is 2d and uh, 3d um, re-entered um, outside I remember a yellow uh, curve. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I found that uh, found the diagram. And I, I, I yeah. know yeah. know what uh, you are talking about. If you prefer, you can show us uh, that curve. That, uh, if you yes. want, you can show yes. us. Uh, I, I, have, uh, I, I am already ready to share, share them, so I, I can I can do it. Yeah. Thank you. You can show us. I am already ready to share. It was this one. I can I can do it. Yes. Uh, this one is uh, is uh, the different type. It's not the reentrant. This is this is the the missing grip. Uh, and uh, this one is uh, I uh, I suppose that uh, uh, the reason is uh, in uh, in different uh, different uh, um, mechanism uh, of uh, of uh, the deformation during uh, during the highest uh, higher strain. Uh, because uh, this uh, this type of oxidix uh, is non I can show it's not it's not uh, symmetric uh, in contrary to the reentrant which is uh, which is symmetric and uh, deforms uh, symmetrically uh, this uh, this uh, uh, missing grip is uh, non symmetric and uh, uh, the um, the behavior during uh, the highest range uh, is different uh, non symmetric and uh, okay thank you very much thank you very much the next presentation is entitled uh, design and manufacturing of uh, a 3D uh, printer uh, filaments uh, extruder uh, and it's presented and by Ashimi. Of, uh, a 3D printer uh, filaments uh, extruder uh, and it's presented by Ashimi. Oh. Professor Ashimi. Because uh, mm, his presentation uh, is program at uh, um, because, um, nine, nine and uh, is program. So, I can wait or 
dice di passare a quella top, eh, ma sono unite. Just a moment, please. Um, perché siamo in anticipo. È eh, di 20 minuti. Just a moment, please. Ok. Perché siamo in anticipo. We can move uh, to the next presentation. Um, and then uh, at the, um, we can at the end, uh, we can try uh, to call again um, Professor Ashin. And then uh, the next presentation. Uh, is entitled Modeling and Control of uh, 3D Filament Extruder and is presented by Nabol C. But the speaker is missing again. So, The next presentation uh, is entitled uh, Multi-Wall uh, Carbon Nanotubes uh, do, not, uh, do not seem uh, to improve the fracture behavior of epoxide matrix and is presented by Sergio Cicero. Yeah, um, hi again. I'm going to show uh, a slide. Yeah, uh, hi again. Yeah, um, continuing with our research on um, polymer matrix uh, composites uh, and uh, nano reinforcement. Uh, nano reinforcement. Um, In this case, we uh, combine uh, epoxy matrix with um, multi-wall uh, carbon nanotubes and different um, contents of uh, reinforcement. Um, and uh, we wanted to share here with all of you negative results because we are generally used to share in papers positive results showing how reinforcement uh, improves mechanical properties. In this case, uh, well, first of all, we tried with uh, different amounts of carbon nanotubes uh, from uh, 0 to 1%, and we have to say that it was impossible for us to generate a decent material when the amount of carbon nanotubes uh, was about 0.2%. Full of forms determining uh, a, a very poor, brittle uh, fracture behavior. So we just had the chance to compare uh, pure epoxy and epoxy with uh, 0.1%. We just percent, had the uh, chance to compare uh, of uh, pure epoxy carbon and nanotubes, epoxy and here you may see the results in this slide, where uh, it basically, uh, well, basically the results are the same, um, except for the notch uh, radius, because we, we, we made the analysis with different notch radius. Uh, except for uh, the notch radius of two millimeters, where uh, carbon nanotubes are even lower than the, the apparent fracture toughness. For the rest of the amounts of carbon nanotubes, uh, was, uh, the effect was uh, basically uh, negligible. And again, we, we, we observed uh, in, in the um, basically uh, scanning uh, electron uh, microscope the, we, we the observe, fractographies uh, we observe uh, uh, obviously was that uh, uh, micro mechanisms uh, were exactly uh, the same uh, with one material uh, and the other we observe, uh, so two problems here uh, uh, basically first of all the difficulty uh, to uh, generate uh, materials uh, with uh, higher uh, amounts uh, of uh, carbon nanotubes so there were lo here, lots lo uh, lo lo first of all me. So you, to yeah, you may see how pores uh, so were inside the material for higher amounts of carbon yeah, nanotubes. And uh, pores, the second problem uh, is that even when you have a well-distributed uh, material in the specimens, uh, the 0.1% of carbon nanotubes, the, 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 the effects well on fracture behavior uh, were uh, negligible. Uh, the specimens, uh, the so that's 0.1%. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, questions or comments? Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry. 
On slide six, what are the dark holes and the dark lines shown? Um, sorry, the last uh, slide that you showed. Yeah. And the dark lines. Say again, the, 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 the dark yeah, can points. Can you share with us yeah, yeah. your screen? Thank yeah. you. Say again, the, the, the dark yeah, points. This one. Yeah, yeah. Your screen? Thank yeah. you. Mm, okay, perfect. Uh, can you explain us uh, what the dark holes and the dark lines represent? Okay, perfect. These ones, these points uh, can here. You us, uh, yes, and the dark lines on the right hand side. Okay, perfect. Uh, the points are pores. Yes, and the dark lines on the right hand side. Yeah, and the lines, do you mean these ones? Uh, the points are yeah. pores. So this is the fractal direction, okay. basically, uh, fractal marks. Lines, do you mean these but uh, the thing, the important thing here is that these are pores, so the material is uh, not valid for our purposes of research. But uh, the thing, mm -hmm. important and this this happened for 0.2% upwards. Okay. Okay. Um, can you explain us uh, the value of uh, um, not root radius okay. in correspondence of which? Um, the, the fracture tactics uh, increase. Mm, uh, this is, uh, yes, this slide. Depends on the uh, nano uh, nanotube sizes. Uh, we we didn't uh, use um, more than one uh, nanotube size, just one. So we didn't uh, analyze that. But what you can see here is that the notch effect is, is, is quite big in this material. We didn't mean it's, it's not uh, so usual to see uh, that when you have a notch radius of one, the apparent fractal toughness is multiplied uh, by six or something. So that when you have a notch radius of one, the apparent fractal toughness is. And uh, did you try to use uh, other nanostructures? Yeah, yeah, we are trying with uh, a number of them. Uh, in the pre first presentation, we we use graphene on, on PLA. Yeah, yeah, we are trying with results. With, uh, in this occasion, uh, nanotubes on uh, epoxy with negative results. And also we tried in the past with polyamide 6 and uh, graphene oxide with not very good results. Either. And for example, did you use uh, uh, nanorods? No. With no. Nano? Um, nano bars? No. Nano beams? No. No, no. no. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, nano bars? No. Nano beams? No. no, no, no. Okay. Um, the next presentation uh, is entitled uh, Scale Effect uh, on the Mechanical Behavior of uh, PLA Specimens, fabricated by, by via uh, fused uh, the position modeling uh, and uh, it's presented by Ju Siu. Hello, um, hi, it's, it's me again. So I'm going to share uh, one of the slides. Hello, um, hi, it's, it's me again. So I'm going to share uh, one of the slides. Can everybody see my slides? Okay. Um, so uh, for this work, uh, we studied the scale effect of uh, mechanical behavior of PLA okay. specimen fabricated with um, so, FDM uh, this technology. Work, uh, we studied the so scale in this case, uh, so the aim for this uh, research is to investigate uh, the influence of the scale of so the uh, test uh, so specimens of, this, in, uh, of mechanical properties. So in this case, uh, we uh, fabricated uh, uh, three uh, uh, sets of them. So the uh, first one is the 100% of the scale, which is the standardized uh, specimen, and the other is 50%, and then uh, the, the 30%. And uh, the pro uh, the process the parameters is on the raster angle, for example, is uh, plus minus uh, 45, and, uh, as usual. The pro, uh, the and uh, uh, we studied uh, tensile test for all of them, and we used the uh, DIC 
to calculate and, uh, the strain uh, and trying to, to to predict the uh, uh, fracture points for for the for the tensile specimen. And uh, uh, we have got the uh, stress strain curve for different scale. So the result uh, we think that um, so for um, so, so if the, the specimen was downscaling uh, experience uh, um, both uh, smaller UTS so and um, the lower elongation so failure. And uh, the reason uh, could be uh, uh, first is because of the first uh, layer quality. As you know, for FDM printing, the first layer quality is very uh, crucial for the uh, specimen. Uh, and uh, sometimes it may uh, vary. And also, uh, it's because of the uh, possible weak spot near near the edge of the gauge lens. Because for this um, printing process, I observed that every time when each layer, when the printer starts printing, it didn't it didn't start uh, at the edge of the specimen. Instead, it starts somewhere near the, the gauge lens, as I showed in the um, video before. So that might be the possible. And also, um, uh, for the uh, for the standard deviation for each uh, mechanical properties, so when it's downscaling, uh, the standard deviation increase. So uh, due to might be the following reason. So first might be the uneven temperature distribution on the on the build plate because we fabricate all these uh, for each set we fabricated five specimens on the plate uh, in a parallel uh, sequence. So the even we set the bed temperature to be 75 degrees, but the distribution of the temperature might not be even on that. So that's why we have the higher uh, violations or discrepancy for that. And also, it's because of the higher possibility of misalignment when testing. Because for the 30% of the specimen, uh, it's really small, and uh, we cannot avoid some possible uh, man-made man issues when doing the testing. Uh, we put putting the specimen on the testing machine, so there was, might, might be some uh, misalignment. Man-made issues when doing the testing. So that's the main conclusion. On the testing machine, so there was might, might be some. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions? So that's the main conclusion. On the testing machine, so there was. Okay, um, thank you. The, the results obtained be the same by considering different values of the raster angles. Uh, yes, all the specimens are fabricated with the same uh, parameters. So plus minus 45 uh, raster yes, angles the and the also uh, two contour lines. So two war counts outside the uh, specimen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, why are the, um, the specimens uh, mm -hmm. with uh, upscaling, as upscaling experience yeah, yeah. less defect and voice? Uh, and voice. Uh, usually the opposite occurs. Yes, yes, I have, uh, yes, exactly. I have checked the literature for some um, traditional uh, manufactured uh, specimens. Normally when it's upscaling, so uh, there were more defects happening there. But in our case, uh, first, as, as we can observe from the optical image, uh, well, I mean, we, we haven't done a, a theory. The, Voids or the defects analysis for so later on we will do the SDM picture for that in order to prove that um, for the upscaling uh, we have less uh, defects or I uh, can say uh, less voids per volume so that's going to affect our real results or so for for now we we only have done uh, the optical uh, microscopy for, for that so we can observe for the upscaling we have we can to have less defects when uh, fabricating Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. I would like uh, to call again uh, Professor Ashimi. Okay, thank you. I would like and uh, uh, Professor Nabolsi.
Ashkini. Ok, thank you. Ok, they are missing. Uh, the session. Ok, the session is now finished. I would like to thank all the speakers and the participants of this section, and I hope uh, all of you have enjoyed this section. Thank you very much. Ok, dear friends, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We will have a long coffee break, so take your own uh, the cup and uh, we will meet again at 11 o'clock okay so thank you so much see you later thank you and we will meet again at 11 o'clock okay so thank you so much see you later thank you thank you we will meet again at 11 o'clock okay thank you thank you so much see you later thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Can you see me now? Hello. Hello, everyone. Can you see me now? Hello, everyone. Can you see me now? So I will start. Hello to everyone. So I will start. Hello to everyone. So I will start. Hello to everyone. Yeah. So one of the aims of my work Hello is everyone. the modeling and the control yeah. of the 3D filament extrusion machine. So our job was so to design and build an extrusion machine to produce experimental samples for our research, as well as to ensure the reliability and conformity of the reliability and conformity of the filament by controlling the temperature in order to meet the raw material at a precisely controlled temperature to extract the quality of the filament. As a result, Sorry, but there is a coffee break now. At a precisely controlled temperature to extract the There is a coffee, coffee break. No. Yeah, yeah, I think most of them are having a coffee break right now, so you may want to present later. There is a coffee, coffee break. Yeah, yeah, I think okay. most of them are yeah. having a coffee break right now, so you may want to present later. Uh, can, I, can I repeat? Yeah, yeah, I think okay. most of them are having a Will you listen me now? Uh, there is a coffee uh, break right now, uh, so everyone not listening to it now. There is a coffee break right now, so everyone not listening to it now. There is a coffee break right now, so everyone coffee break.
Jonathan, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to meet you. So, thank you again to be here, and uh, we will start with the second session. Just a little information before starting this session. Uh, I think we have the two colleagues for, from the first session. Are you here? Because I know that you join us. In case that these uh, two colleagues are with us, at the end of the second session, Javad will give the, the chair to Sabrina, and we will have these two additional presentations at the end of this session. So, uh, Javad, thank you for joining us. Javad is a very nice friend from Norway, and uh, he will chair this second session. Please enjoy. Thank you, Francesco. So, we are going to start the second session, and uh, in this session, we have nine presentations. Thank you, Francesco. Eventually, as Francesco mentioned, we will have two additional presentations at the end. But starting from the first presentation, uh, Mr. Shu is going to present his research uh, with the title Thickness Effect on Mechanical Behavior of PLA Specimens Fabricated via Fuse Deposition Modeling. Hello, uh, I will just share my slide here. Uh, can everyone see the slide? I will just share my slide. Here. So uh, the, the title of this presentation uh, is uh, Thickness slide? Effect on the Mechanical Behavior of PLA Specimen Fabricated so, uh, via FDM. So the goal of this uh, research is to investigate the influence of the thickness of PLA specimens uh, fabricated via FDM. Uh, so in this research, uh, we have uh, proposed, uh, we have set four different thickness which is uh, one millimeter, uh, three millimeter, five millimeters, and uh, 10 millimeters. So all of them have the same gauge length and the other parameters ex expect for the difference of the thickness. And uh, um, for the uh, standard specimen, it's uh, three uh, millimeter thickness, and uh, all of them are tensile specimens. So we did a tensile test for all of them. And uh, we, as you can see from the image here, we also use the DIC to calculate the strain in order to get the uh, stress strain curve for that. And uh, in the end, uh, we got the uh, stress strain curve. And the, the main conclusion is uh, for higher thickness, the specimen experience uh, the larger, uh, the, the higher UTS as well as the larger elongation at failure. And also, um, the, the reason uh, behind this is um, due to some following uh, reasons. So first is because of the uh, first uh, layer quality. Uh, the other is my uh, because of the uh, higher, uh, because of the uh, increasing in the thickness, so there is a higher temperature gradient in, in the layers, which can result in the increase in the diffusion process. So uh, we also de decrease the void ratio and improve the strength of the function process. So also, yes, uh, and also uh, uh, according to the uh, optical microscopy, uh, there is a possibility uh, also, that yes. the specimen uh, tends to have uh, uh, less defects uh, 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 per, well, of voids uh, per volume uh, when the thickness increases. So that's why we observed uh, this uh, phenomenon from, uh, from uh, our experiment. Of voids per volume. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, from the audience, uh, does anyone have any question on this uh, Thank you for presentation that Mr. Shu uh, had? From the audience, uh, does anyone have any uh, hello? question? Hello, Dr. Javad. Uh, hi, hi, Shu. From hello. The audience, um, just a quick question. Hello? Sure. Um, hello. Uh, regarding, I just I was wondering, uh, hi, this uh, uh, 3D printing that you, you were using, uh, just a quick uh, how was the resolution uh, of the uh, 3D printer, uh, and if the resolution affected the results? Uh, 3D how was the resolution? Also, okay, so the uh, maximum, the resolution so we used um, Prusa i3, M, I, MK3, if I memorize correctly, and the maximum resolution for uh, the axis is 50 micro, uh, 
and the so maximum 0.05 uh, millimeter micrometers and uh, so the layer height we used in this uh, research is 0.1 millimeter for the thickness and uh, we have uh, it, we we have done some trials and errors to adjust the printing parameters to make sure that uh, we try to get as much as the infill percentage to reach the 100% and also maintaining the uh, correct dimensions for for the specimens because we don't want any uh, over extrusion or less extrusion for the fabrication. Perfect. Thank you very much. Just yeah. one more question uh, because sure. I see this uh, picture. Mm -hmm. um, those items that they broke, like close to the grape, did you cancel them out from the final results or no? Just was wondering. Mm -hmm. um, those items that they broke, like close to the grape. So, sorry, say one more question again. Yeah, those uh, samples that you yeah. see broken pattern, they broke uh, very uh, close to the grape. Did you cancel them yeah. from the those, final uh, result or uh, no? Uh, no, I, in this case, I include uh, all of the uh, all of them in the results. Uh, one phenomenon I observed is uh, yeah, uh, more, most of them uh, actually break near the the gauge belt. So, but I carefully checked. Actually, it's um, it's all within the gauge belt. And the one of the reason is uh, for the fabrication um, process. Uh, so instead of uh, the printing starting from the edge of the specimen, it's for each layer is starting in the um, near near somewhere near the gauge bed. So that's why this spot maybe had some defects in uh, for the for the fabrication. That's why it has the majority of the portion. To tend to be breaking here. Some defects yeah. In the, uh, Thank you very much. That's why it has the majority of the uh, Is there any other question on this presentation from the audience? Thank you very much. I have one question, although I'm involved in this research, so probably it wouldn't be the best ethical question, but I was wondering how do you think the observed trend of the change in the ultimate strength probably wouldn't be the best for, let's say, the stiffness? Would change um, if you were changing the process parameters? Do you, do you think you would get the same trend if, for example, you had a layer height that was twice or three times of what you used? Mm -hmm. What is your expectation in that case? Well, uh, according to the literature review I have done, so if the layer height is larger, so for example, right now my case is 0.1 millimeter, if I change the layer height to 0.2, that will decrease the bonding uh, for each layer and for the stiffness for the young modulus, so it will decrease as well by, by increasing the layer height. For the, the yes, layer thickness, the yes. So How would it affect the thickness effect as well? Oh, for the by, thickness by effect. Um, the hmm. the yes, I know you haven't done it, but it just because your guess or based on your oh, experience in this effect. research, um, what do you think? Do you think the hmm. thickness effect would be more have, or would be less? Just, and just why? Yes. You think? Uh, I, I think in that case uh, would be more because uh, we have um, um, weaker layer bonding, uh, but if I, I we have a case, higher uh, thickness for each have, layer, uh, so uh, the defects uh, will be more dominant uh, according to uh, com compared to the um, compared to the thickness we have now. So in, in that case, so the more defects we have, the more the more obvious um, thickness effect we will have. I, that, that's my best guess so far. Of course, it would be nice to see. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, because uh, the, the thing about this uh, FDM printing is that anyone is yeah. setting some specific process parameters. Yeah, there is no uh, standard value. Think about this, uh, mm -hmm. right. what you yeah. see, it may not be the case for someone else who prints the same specimen, but with a little bit of different conditions. Yes. yes. And I have one more question. I think we still have time. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that uh, yes. you observe and lower elastic modulus for higher mm -hmm. You mentioned mm -hmm. so uh, this elastic uh, lower elastic uh, modulus. modulus. What? Why do you think is that? Why? Why do you think mm -hmm. you're getting lower uh, elastic modulus for a thicker sample? 
so uh, one uh, one reason could be the uh, the first uh, layer uh, quality and uh, also the uh, reason could be the the residue stress for the for the for the specimen because uh, for the for the larger uh, thickness we have uh, less effect for the uh, first layer quality and the red residue stress thickness we Okay. Less effect. We get one uh, first layer quality and the one question from Professor Correa. Um, yes, was any correlation found between failure modes and stress strain curves? Um, yes, was hmm. any correlation Did you check the failure modes on the samples? Like, yeah, if they are failing from uh, shear, or is it always perpendicular to the loading direction? And uh, according to the, the the image I have here, so so the first, so as you can see, my cursor here. So this is the uh, specimen for one millimeter thickness. So uh, two of them failed. Uh, so based on the raster angles, and all of the others uh, failed um, perpendicularly. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so usually when you have this type of 45 degree angle or along the fibers, that shows that you have a possible weak bonding. So usually when you have so this approves what you were mentioning before that uh, most probably there has been higher defects in senior samples. So this is probably something that you can study better doing some SEM analysis on the fracture surface and correlating it to the observations that you have had. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Limited time, so I would like to thank you for your presentation, and uh, we can move on to the next presentation. Yes, exactly. Uh, the topic of next presentation is mode one fracture testing of polymers, and it is being presented by Mr. Jamali. The topic of next presentation is mode one fracture testing of polymers, uh, hi everyone, you have uh, my voice. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone um, from super hot Kuwait. First of all, uh, um, I'm attending from Kuwait. Uh, the weather uh, over here right now is 39, almost 40 degrees. So that makes me jealous at uh, many of them. So enjoy uh, the weather. We enjoyed it like back in winter, but now uh, things like this uh, super hot uh, So uh, that's my pleasure actually to uh, present this the second time attending in this conference. Uh, thanks to Francesco for all the effort and help and information. Uh, actually, the work that uh, I have presented over here uh, is related to uh, Dr. Jawad, how I can share my screen. I'm, I'm very bad in presented over here. Dr. Jawad, how I can share my screen. Okay, so there is this uh, green box down on the uh, Oh, yes. yes. Uh, and I have two. Okay, let me just move to my screen too, right? Exactly. So I guess. Yeah. Do you see the presentation? Yeah, okay. Yes. So it's good. It's, I think it's better uh, looking at the slides than my face. I look like a monster. I don't know. I try to adjust this camera so that it's not close to me, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not using camera much. Uh, uh, yeah, the main idea of this work was basically is trying to help us understand uh, what is yeah, affecting uh, and how fracture of polymer matrix comes. Like. And to do so, so we have been trying, and you know, say we and I and my, my uh, students uh, over here, and I'm mostly dealing with bachelor um, undergrad students. Uh, so our our work was uh, trying to understand what is happening in the process of fracture of polymer matrix uh, composite and one of the constituents so over our, here our are polymers. So, polymers. so we did an extensive the study on epoxy and uh, we started from mode one, mode two, and mixed mode so loading over there. We uh, then shifted to some polymer uh, composites made uh, from epoxy, mainly different type of glass fiber epoxy. And now, uh, because fortunately here in Kuwait, you know, it's a like giant uh, oil uh, producer and they have a large, now, uh, large uh, petrochemical companies that they are uh, like producing like different oil products such as uh, resins. So we had this uh, access to uh, polyester, 
different. So I thought we, it's a good idea to start working on polyesters. So, so the first step for us was to, uh, trying to uh, polyester design polyester and uh, manufacture to uh, equipment related to mode one testing and see uh, uh, which one is like uh, more convenient, or, uh, 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 more reliable to work. Basically, for mode one, we have you know CT and SENB tests. So we worked on the design and uh, basically for more. Uh, Basically, solid work design of these models went to the manufacturing of CT tests. The same thing for uh, SENB, as you see over here, um, SENB test. And also, in parallel, we they made the specimen. Uh, my experience was um, uh, using our experience was using actually uh, silicone mold. It was, was a good idea. It was flexible. It was working. First of all, we need to know about their uh, um, the uh, tensile properties of this specimen because in order to calculate the uh, strain energy release rate, we need to know uh, some properties such as uh, E. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do I talk to my... <laughs> no, no, it's easy. But uh, because we need to have also some room for the question. So if you just sure. and the conclusion, do uh, I talk to and go for the question? <laughs> no, no, yeah, sure. Sorry but, uh, again. Uh, most of my time, I'm, I'm a teacher. So, you know, teacher, <laughs> compared to you guys that like 80%, uh, 90% <laughs> researchers, so that's the difference. I talk too much. I apologize for that. Now, these are like uh, the main, to you guys that like these are the yeah, main um, uh, the topics that we discussed over here. We performed mold one fracture uh, using SENB test and uh, CT test, and uh, we can calculate the value of the fracture force based on that we calculated the value of fracture toughness as a result of strain energy release rate for uh, these material that uh, for the number of specimens that we did was at least like uh, six acceptable specimens for each case um, there was almost like 22 percent difference between these two results which is not significant if especially we concern the um, standard deviation of these tests we cannot 100% say that SEMB is a better result, but at least based on what we did and the standard deviation, you see these results are more precise, they have more level of repeatability compared to CT, uh, CT tests. We also performed thickness study and uh, so if you want to continue this work, I think generally we would go to SEMB tests for this type of uh, um, so if you want to continue fracture this testing, we're going to continue yeah, this go to, to mode two and mix mode two later on. Of, Thank you very much. Sorry. Um, Thank you. So Thank you fracture testing. Uh, from the audience, uh, if there is any question, you can Thank either you ask your question or write it in the chat. So from the audience, if there is any question, you can either ask your question or write it. And look at these beautiful specimens. Students made it and nice and neat. Sometimes it's not that easy to <laughs> work with polymers. Is there any questions? Some of those as the sculpture is not. Oh, you have it. Sometimes it's not that <laughs> easy to. <laughs> okay, uh, I have actually a couple of questions that I, that I can ask. Uh, so we see that the, the discrepancy of the data is uh, quite large for the CT specimen. But so considering the average value or let's say the median average value, value what do you think is the reason for 22% lower value when you are testing with SENB specimens? Yeah, uh, but one of the ideas that we, we got okay, based on our uh, um, fixture. So we thought one of maybe one of the reason yeah, is, uh, is that the out of the plane bending that our, uh, we might end up fixture. while we are applying so this kind of it's basically uh, simple similar to tens tensile testing that we might end up uh, in, in CT specimen. So, so that might be one of the reasons that resulted in some of the fracture surfaces. We noticed that we have a little bit of kink in the surface, so it's not as flat as was expected. So that might be one. One of the reasons, besides when we were also working uh, to uh, cut the tip of the notch to make sure this is like help to have uh, more convenient result, or we are introducing a little bit of plastic uh, region at the tip of the notch. 
so that might be different from um, our SCNB specimen to our um, region. The, tip of the, the effect might be different from SCNB so specimen to CT specimen, and that might be another um, result. This were like among two main results that came to our understanding. Usually, based on my understanding, different specimen geometries they may have different geometrical constraints. Usually, based on my and a good way to measure this geometrical constraint is to measure the true stress value. They have different geometrical constraints. That could be also a possible way to check the true stress values that you have in these two specimens and see how it is affecting the results. Usually, CT specimen is designed in a way to have the minimum T stress. So what you get is not dependent on the geometry, but the, usually the property of the bulk material. Uh, but by changing it from CT to any other specimen, we usually have some higher or negative values of uh, T stress that can uh, affect uh, the fracture toughness or the apparent fracture toughness that we get from the sample. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. It was very informative. Um, Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Can go for the Thank you very much talk for to remain on the schedule. Um, Thank you very much for your time. Uh, then the topic of next talk the, is recent development in aluminum matrix composite forging. Uh, effects of mechanical uh, effect on the mechanical the and physical properties. And uh, Mrs. Panani, um, I think, properties. is the presenter. And uh, uh, is the presenter of that work uh, Panani, available? Um, I think he's the presenter. And uh, is the presenter of that work uh, Panani, available? Um, I think he's the presenter. Uh, sorry, I can share my PowerPoint. Work, uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I can share my PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, for sharing it, okay, yeah. Uh, sorry, sure. I can share my PowerPoint. Great. Okay. If you just keep the description uh, short sharing, in one or two minutes, that would be great. Thank you. If you just keep the uh, okay, thank you. Hello, minutes, everyone. I'm Elvira from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Blas Marat University. I would like to thank you for joining this section. Hello, it's great I'm opportunity for me to present my review article. University. The title is like Recent Development in Aluminum Metric Composite for G, Effect on the Mechanical and Physical Properties. Metal matrix composite have become one of the most widely used material for industry. One type of metal matrix composite is aluminum matrix composite. The method commonly used to produce AMC is tear casting. Uh, but the conventional method generally have uh, several problems uh, like porosity and uh, homogeneous distribution particle. This problem can be solved by secondary treatment like forging process. The advantage of forging process is superior mechanical properties, favorable green orientation, no material waste, etc. Uh, forging is classified based on several things uh, as discussed as follow in this slide. Uh, from this review, we know, we know that something. Uh, first, forging is done by using open tie forging, close tie forging, hot forging, cold forging, unidirectional forging, bidirectional forging, and multidirectional forging. Forging causes a reduction in the green size. Green flow and alignment of microstructure was also uniform. Hardness of the composite increase after forging. Ultimate tensile strength of the composite increase after forging, and the ductility of the composite will decrease after forging. Uh, this is my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, from the audience. Uh, does anyone have any question Thank regarding this presentation? presentation. Um, from the audience, uh, does anyone have any question regarding this presentation? Okay, I can, I can ask a question. So uh, you mentioned in your conclusions that uh, by doing the forging, 
Deforme or elongation so, of failure, or let's say the ductility decreases. By doing the poor yes. but uh, in the presentation that you had uh, in the video, we see that by increasing the, the forging uh, percentage or the, the steps of the forging, the ductility is showing an increase and then a decrease. Can you, if you can share your presentation, maybe I can show you on there on one of the slides. Uh, no, your you main presentation. presentation. Maybe I can Do you have it? Oh, okay. Main. Uh, no, your main presentation. Maybe I can Do you have it? There on one of the oh, okay. Main. It's okay if you don't have it. It's okay. I just want to let's say you have four paths of uh, forging. Uh, how do you think the okay. if you don't have it, the ductility of your material you is changing during these four paths, uh, starting forging. from the first path to the fourth path? Uh, how do you think the okay. if you don't have it, the is it decreasing continuously is changing during these four paths, uh, starting from the first path uh, yeah. to the fourth path? Uh, how do you yes, think, uh, uh, I think. Is it decreasing uh, from continuously? The reset uh, from yeah, the uh, some uh, journal that I read, uh, the ductility of the composite will decrease, decrease after forging. I read the ductility of the And what can be the source for that? Will decrease, decrease after from forging. I read the ductility of the And what can be the source for that? From from uh, from Liu from Liu 2020. Uh, in this reset, they they say from, that uh, from Liu from Liu uh, study the NTF and aging treatment effect on friction and wear characterization of aluminum bronze uh, and the result of study is ductility decreasing sharply before multi-directional forging. Engineering strain was carried out by 2020.1%. But after, after multi-directional forging, engineering strain was 15.2%. From, uh, from this, uh, uh, we know that the, the ductility value is reduced. From this, uh, but uh, do, you, do you have an explanation on why uh, have they reported the, the reason? One of the reasons probably could be the, the concentration of these dislocations that you have after extreme plastic deformation in the material, but I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure about that. I was just wondering if you have read it somewhere. Extreme plastic deformation in the material, but I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure about that. I was just wondering if you have read it somewhere. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I'm so sorry. Can you can you re repeat your question? Um, I was just mentioning okay, if, so if this you, reduction in ductility is due to the uh, any change um, in the configuration of the, uh, the dislocations in the material. Is due to the of any change um, in the configuration of the, uh, the dislocations in the material. It's, it's not that important though, but uh, uh, thank you for the presentation. Let me just ask if there is any other question on this presentation from the audience. If there is any other question on this presentation, please uh, ask your question. We still have two minutes. From the audience, if there is any other question on this presentation, please uh, just ask if there is any question. We still have two minutes. There is uh, no more question. Thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Fanani. Um, we can move on to the next presentation now. There is uh, no more. Questions. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you, uh, Ms. Okay, uh, Fanani. Thank you. Um, we can move on to the next presentation now. There is, uh, the topic of next presentation, presentation is uh, composite step lap adhesive joint analysis by cohesive zone modeling. The topic of next presentation it is being presented by Mr. Brito. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am the second author. I am Paul Cantillo. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, 
Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am the second author. I am Paul Cantillo. Uh, so, so this work, uh, this short presentation, uh, is entitled Composite Step Plot with Joint Analysis by Covizit Zone Modeling. Uh, the main contributor of this work is Coy Brito, who is uh, one of my master's students, uh, and I am one of the supervisors. We all come from ZEP, the School of Engineering in Porto. The, the main objective of this work is to perform uh, a strength and failure mode analysis of composite step plot joints, uh, like the one that we can see in this figure. Uh, and we are going to use the cohesive zone modeling with a triangular glass shape uh, to validate the experiments. Uh, the materials of the, the, the composite joints are carbon epoxy composite adherents, and we are testing three different adhesives, uh, two epoxy adhesives, AB138 and 2015, and a polyurethane adhesive, the Sika Force 7752. The main parameter that we varied in these joints is the overlap length, which is uh, named as LO in the figure. Uh, we can see also uh, an example of joints ready for testing in the picture below, uh, namely the side view, uh, in which it is visible the, the three-step uh, configuration uh, and the adhesive joining the two composite adherents. Uh, we began by uh, performing uh, an experimental analysis to the joints, and in the uh, the graphic that we have below to the right, we can see the, the failure strength of the joints for the three adhesives, uh, and with overlap lengths between 12.5 and 15 millimeters, uh, we have um, a major difference between adhesives because of their ductility and their strength. Uh, for example, the AV138 uh, behaves worse uh, for, for high overlaps because it is very brittle and it cannot account uh, for, the, for the large peak stresses that develop in the adhesive. Uh, numerically, uh, we consider the Abacus software in 2D modeling. Uh, we consider the, the quad damage for damage initiation and the, the, uh, an energetic linear criterion for damage propagation and the triangular CVM model, as we can see in the figure to the right. Um, we consider the plane strain elements for the adhesion and the four node cohesive elements for the adhesion. Uh, we can see an example of the model uh, considering different failure possibilities. Uh, namely failure in the steps, uh, namely in the butt portions of the adhesive, the, the small vertical portions connecting to the three steps, and we also accounted for the possibility of the lamination in the composite at several horizontal planes. Um, as, an, as an example, I just show here the, the, the agreement um, for the AV138, uh, and here I am comparing uh, step lab composite joints with step lab aluminum joints. Uh, this was another comparison that we did. Uh, generally, the, the agreement between the CVM modeling analysis and the experimental values was good, uh, especially for the epoxy adhesives. Uh, however, for the for the 7752 adhesives, since it is very reptile, uh, we had a slight under prediction uh, by using a triangular cohesive law. But as a main conclusion, we managed to validate this technique, and we can now use this technique to, to strength predict this type of joints and design structures. So, thank you very much. If you have any questions, I am happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. From the audience, is there any question? Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. From the audience, is there any questions? Okay, uh, I can probably ask one question. If you go to the previous slide, uh, please, uh, where you're presenting the failure. Yes. Is there any okay. So uh, for the adhesive AV138, is this a brittle adhesive? Uh, uh, yes, it, it, it is an adhesive which is very strong. It, it has a cell strength of 40 megapascals, but it is very brittle. 
Okay. So it only works well for short overlaps. It needs to stress the armor uniform. Okay. Um, why do you think it's there's a reason that it's getting some deviation for a longer uh, bonding length? Uh, smaller string? Yes, from the linear linear trend that the other two at least you have. Ah, okay. Uh, let me show you the full presentation because I have this plastic solution here. Ah, okay. Uh, let me show you the full presentation because I have this plastic solution here. Sorry, it has sound. I cannot the presentation working. Um, I have here the, um, the shear and fill stresses, uh, but in this case, I only have for one adhesive. Uh, and what happens with stress distribution in this type of joints uh, is that, for example, this plot is for the shear stresses, uh, is that we, we can clearly see um, the three different steps uh, along this plot, the normalized length of the joint. Um, and this big stress is that we can see here um, at, at the end of each step, uh, they highly increase with the overlap length. Uh, this is for a different adhesive, but the concept is the same. Uh, so as we increase the, the overlap length, the stress is go from the blue line to the yellow line. Uh, and what, what happens is that since this adhesive is very brittle, uh, for overlap lengths uh, above 25 or for high overlap lengths, uh, the adhesive cannot uh, undergo plasticization for this uh, for these big stresses, and then the, the joint fa fails prematurely. Uh, for the other two adhesives, if they have some ductility, uh, when these big stresses are reached at the step edges, uh, plasticization begins uh, until in the limit we will have a, a constant stress in the, in the step. So we can have uh, an increase of stress, uh, which is almost linear with the overlap length because of the ductility of the adhesive. Would, would it work if you were applying the ductile adhesives on the two sides where you're having the peak values and in the middle you can use the strong would, would adhesive that it breathes? Uh, yes, it, it, uh, it is a technique that is, that is used in some cases uh, in single up joints. Um, in, in step lap joints, we can also, for example, uh, put uh, a more ductile adhesive uh, into the edge steps and a more little adhesive in the middle step. Yes, it would be a possibility to improve the, the behavior of that adhesive. Yes, it would be a possibility to improve Is there any question from the audience on this presentation? I can still have one from ask one question. <laughs> In the slide that you're showing the failure modes for the uh, tested adhesive joints, ask one question. Um, In the slide that you're showing the failure for the bonded for joints the, with higher uh, bonding length, tested adhesive yeah, uh, your main presentation. Um, the slide that you're showing the failure for the bonded joints with higher uh, bonding length, tested adhesive yeah, uh, your main presentation. Uh, uh, no, the fracture surface, I meant. Ah, okay. The experimental failure. So these are different bonding lengths that you had from 12.5 to 37.5. In the 37.5, what I see is that you're having it's either adhesive failure or uh, near surface cohesive. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the case with the 25 millimeter, it's perfect cohesive failure. Uh, what do you think? What is the reason that we are having? We are experiencing these two different failure modes. Uh, I'm actually seeing that also the adhesives are different. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, the, the main reason is that uh, for the 2015, uh, we have a cohesive failure. Earlier, but we had uh, a, 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 a visible uh, layer of adhesive in both sides. Uh, for the 7752, the failure is also adhesive, uh, but we need to check very closely uh, to see a very thin layer of adhesive in the black portion. It is still cohesive, but it is near to one of the interfaces. We usually get this type of failure when we have very ductile adhesive. Yeah. Uh, but, but do you know what is the reason for it? 
why in this case we would have uh, near surface, surface failure, failure, failure while for the other one we have uh, almost uh, near failure. But do we know what is yeah, the reason? Uh, well, I'm not sure why why the of the reason, the uh, but, but this is something that we got for all of the overlap lengths for the 7752. We always got collision, but near to one of the surfaces, maybe because of the different stiffness of the identity. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Nice presentation. Thank you. So we can move on to the next presentation with the title Weird Behavior of Cold Spray Stellite 6 Coatings During Reciprocated Dry Sliding. From the authors, is any of them present? Good morning, good morning to all. Can I show my short version of the presentation? Any of them present? Yes, please. Uh, good morning, good morning to all. Can I show my okay. short version of uh, Good morning, I'm Pietro Magaro, and uh, the title of this work is uh, Will be ever hold spread? The light six coatings okay. during reciprocated uh, dry sliding. Uh, the title of the work is uh, Will be ever hold spread? The, the, the samples were um, pr pr produced okay. using a technology okay. named Cold Gas Dynamic Spray. And the aim of this work is the studying of the uh, wear properties uh, of these uh, coatings under different combinations of uh, sliding uh, uh, speed and uh, contact pressure. Uh, in fact, the first result is the uh, difference in the evolution of the dynamic friction coefficient uh, as a function of the, uh, of the sliding speed. In fact, uh, at low speed, 0.1 meter per second, uh, um, uh, uh, we can um, we can see um, big fluctuation in the friction coefficient, and an almost constant trend is observable at uh, 0 0.5 meter per second. Uh, this phenomenon uh, can be related to the uh, different damage mechanisms observed on the uh, track surface of the wear surface of the of the samples at the end of the test. In fact. Uh, uh, at low speed, uh, the uh, wear mechanisms uh, seem to be mainly abrasive in this case, and in particular um, due to uh, pull out uh, phenomena that can be observed in the, uh, in the in this slide. Uh, and uh, um, this phenomena uh, result in a uh, in a linear trend of the, uh, of the in an almost linear trend. We can see. Uh, <coughs> of the uh, of the um, of the weird coefficient. On the other end, on the other end in this slide, we can see that the. Uh, uh, damage mechanisms, in particular, increasing the, the contact end, pressure, the seem to be uh, mainly uh, adhesive. Uh, in uh, fact, uh, in this case, the results uh, show an almost constant trend uh, of the uh, wear coefficient. Uh, in fact, this result uh, is also uh, in, in accordance case, with the shared uh, equation, uh, with the model proposed by a short in this work. Uh, and, uh, other activities uh, uh, regarded the uh, evolution of the uh, mechanical properties of the uh, cross section of the coatings measured by nano implantation, in particular, reducing young modules and uh, nano hardness. Uh, you can see in this slide how reduced young modules tend to increase increasing contact pressure. Uh, in the case of low sliding speed, 0.1 meter per second. Uh, on the contrary, we can uh, we can observe a marked reduction of both reduced young modules and uh, nano hardness, nano hardness along the uh, along the thickness of the of the coatings uh, as a function of the contact pressure in the case of uh, 0.5 meter per second. Uh, the main conclusion is that the uh, damage mechanisms uh, are different and depending on the, uh, in particular, depending on the uh, sliding uh, of the sliding speed. And these latter results can be related also 
uh, to the evolution of the uh, microstructure, to the uh, modification of the microstructure of the uh, of the coatings along the uh, thickness. In fact, uh, in the case of 0.5 meter per second, uh, very large uh, cracks can be observed uh, in the uh, in the thickness. Uh, in the case of the 0.5 meter per second, the are absent. Uh, we, can, we can see in the in the case of 0.1. Thank you for your attention. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your um, so the session is open for questions. If anyone has questions regarding this presentation, please. Um, Either so you can ask your question or write it in chat so I can uh, ask the presenter. Either you can ask your question or write it in chat so I can okay. uh, ask the presenter. We have some shy audience, so I will ask the question. Okay. Uh, I, I had a question uh, regarding uh, the cases that you studied. Uh, I think it was dry contact. Uh, how do you think the trend of this reduced uh, stiffness or the hardness would change if, if you had a fluid lubricant reduced uh, while you were doing the test? Would it change anything or would you just see the same trend but with different values? Uh, in, in the case of wet contact or in the case of the dry, of the dry contact? Uh, wet contact. And we we went contact on the case of the uh, we did not do uh, experiment in this condition now, but uh, we so the, the the study of the wet contact is in process now. So uh, I I don't have I, I don't have uh, uh, right now information about the uh, evolution of uh, mechanical properties in the case of uh, wet contact. I don't have right now. Yeah, my my question was mainly uh, your expectation. What ah, my expectation. Uh, so it, it depends on the. It depends on yeah, the. My, my I think on the uh, uh, damage mechanisms uh, uh, that so could the, be uh, the, uh, mainly the, uh, present uh, in the case of the wet contact. So uh, I think that, uh, uh, that uh, in the case of the wet contact, I think that they uh, the, uh, the so, uh, also that, uh, increasing the sliding this the, the sliding speed. I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, where mechanics uh, uh, should be mainly uh, abrasive also in the case of uh, high speed. So uh, uh, I expect uh, that the uh, evolution of stiffness of the reducing young modulus is more likely uh, uh, similar to uh, these results uh, and not uh, similar to uh, this one uh, because this evolution uh, can be uh, attributed uh, mainly to uh, uh, adhesive uh, weird. Because this evolution uh, can be uh, attributed uh, mainly to... Oh, considering the, the uh, deformed uh, surfaces uh, after, uh, after the uh, test, uh, so you had two cases where you were having oh, two different speeds the, the uh, and two cases where you had two different pressures. Uh, uh, which, which of these uh, four cases do you consider as uh, the worst case if we so consider the damage to the coating for later application, for example, you have a corrosive environment. Case, so which of these four conditions could be the worst? The and which one is the safest for later one? Application, for example, you uh, have a corrosive could you repeat your question? So which of these okay, four so you had these four conditions, and which one is uh, the safest different one? speeds, different pressure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you reported that uh, for the higher speeds, it, you observed some cracking in the coating. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so that, uh, was that cracking uh, observed for both pressures? Some cracking but I think that uh, yeah. and, uh, so, so uh, the cracks are visible in the uh, in the uh, testing but in the samples that, uh, tested at high speed so, so, uh, because the, okay, um, the so the the damage mechanism uh, was the, uh, so uh, samples so tested at high speed because mainly adhesive. But in the case of 0.1 meter per second. The the main phenomenon uh, is the pullout. So I think that cracks, uh, ignition, and propagation 
the main phenomenon may be uh, occurred also in the case of slow, uh, of, uh, of slow speed, but uh, uh, this propagation uh, results in uh, pullout. So if mm, the crux is not observable in the cross section after the test, but it's possible to assume that the uh, crux signature and uh, propagate also in the case of 0 0.1 meter per second. So due to the uh, pullout that uh, result as a consequence of crux that propagate inside the body. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions on this presentation? Okay. Thank you very much um, for presenting your research. It was very enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can move on okay. to the next presentation. The topic is effect of heat treatment on mechanical properties of FEM and ALC alloys. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, so this is uh, Avishek Mandal from Department of uh, Chemical Engineering, Sapienza. Uh, I'd like to share my screen. Uh, hi. Uh, so this is uh, Avishek Mandal from Department of uh, Chemical Engineering, Sapienza. Uh, I'd like so this is my presentation on the effect of heat treatment on mechanical properties of FEM and ALC alloys. So for this research, we considered two kinds of alloys, uh, named B23 and B37. B23 with higher percentage of manganese and aluminium, while B37 with a lower uh, quantity of manganese and aluminium. The first test that we did was an aging test uh, at 550 degrees Celsius. Here, from both the graphs, we can see that um, at after 16 hours or so of aging, uh, B23 shows a drastic uh, change in its uh, hardness, while B37 has more or less the same kind of uh, hardness levels. Uh, after that, we did the tensile test. Before the heat treatment, both the alloys B23 and B37 uh, show uh, similar kind of uh, mechanical behaviors. While after heat treatment of eight hours, uh, we can see that while B37 did not uh, change in its uh, change its mechanical behavior, uh, while B23 after eight hours of heat treatment shows brittle behavior uh, with almost uh, no uh, uh, elastic uh, behavior and it, is, it was very very brittle so the next thing comes is the alloy microstructure uh, for b37 before and after uh, heat treatment uh, the microstructure did not change uh, it had a austenitic structure while the b23 shows a change in its uh, microstructure before the heat treatment we can see in this graph that it has a microstructure similar to austenitic steel uh, which is again verified by the XRD graphs. But after heat treatment, uh, we, see, we see that there, there has been formation of intermetallic phases uh, in, of aluminium, manganese, and iron manganese, uh, which is again verified by the uh, XRD graphs. Coming to the fracture surfaces for both the alloys, B23 and B37, uh, before the heat treatment, they show a very ductile kind of fracture. While after heat treatment, B37 shows a ductile fracture fracture very while B23 fracture. shows a very brittle fracture. While after heat treatment, so, uh, I can conclude that based upon the composition of the alloys, uh, the behavior of the speci uh, alloys, especially when the alloy work so, uh, I can above 560, uh, 500 to 600 degrees Celsius, the, alloys, uh, the, uh, the alloy with higher quantity of manganese and aluminium become brittle due to the uh, uh, formation of intermetallic phases. Uh, and it is very important to optimize the chemical composition of the alloy in order to guarantee a high fracture toughness uh, at high temperature. Uh, of intermetallic uh, thank you. And it is very important to optimize the chemical yeah. composition of the alloy in order to guarantee a high fracture uh, toughness at high temperature. I would like to ask the audience uh, thank you. Uh, if they have any questions regarding this. to optimize the chemical composition of the alloy in order to guarantee a high fracture toughness at high temperature. I would like to ask the audience. Okay. Thank you. I can ask one question. Oh, yes. Yes, there is a question. Uh, have there correlation between the given heat treatments to change of strength been quantified? For example, in percentage of change. Um, not right now, because this is something uh, which 
uh, does not have a very uh, correlated uh, relation of development uh, of intermetallic phases with respect to time. So if we uh, can get a uh, correlated a a relation between uh, how much the uh, change in intermetallic phases develop so with respect to time, I think we can find uh, this kind of uh, correlation. But at this moment, that is not available. Change in intermetallic phases develop with respect to time, I think we can find this kind of correlation. I was wondering if we did also any XRD analysis on the B37. So uh, we did uh, uh, XRD analysis on B37 before and after heat treatment as well, but um, it did not show any change in its uh, in its properties. So they had the same uh, uh, peaks, uh, which at this moment uh, doesn't, uh, which is not of much importance because the change we see is in B23 uh, because uh, its microstructure changed as well as uh, the formation of intermetallic phases with heat treatment. C is in B23. But you're seeing uh, more than 20% uh, changes in the as well as the formation of the metallic phase with heat treatment. C is in B23. There can be a lot of reasons, but uh, at this moment, uh, we are not clear about uh, what causes those kind of uh, changes. Okay, there you're more interested in the 20 but, uh, at this moment, uh, we are not Yes, clear about, uh, because uh, causes those kind of, uh, that gives a total, uh, a different kind of microstructure in total. I mean, after a few hours of yes, heat treatment. Uh, uh, yeah. that gives you mentioned total, that you uh, had this intermetallic kind of uh, component in I mean, after yes. a few hours in the material of after treatment. aging. Uh, yes. Then you mentioned that you, you mentioned observed that you the lamination layer in that yes. Yes. After, yes. After, yes. After, yes. after aging. What was the reason yes. for this delamination layer? You observed the of intermetallic layer is not a cause for delamination What was the reason for Mainly because of two reasons. Uh, one is the formation of uh, phases, phase one, and second is that during the hot rolling process, I think uh, when the ma metal was produced, they, it had defects uh, during the pro process of rolling, hot rolling. That is why when it was heat treated, uh, it formed the lamination layers. Do you think there has been any residual stresses in it that has been relaxed and opened up this defect? I cannot say at this moment because, uh, I mean, it was a metal which was received from others and we did not produce it. I cannot say at this moment because uh, I think something I mean, to look for. it was a metal which was received from but, others. But uh, thank you for the presentation. Is there it. any question from the audience on this presentation? Because, uh, I think something I mean, to look for. It was a metal which was received from but, uh, others. Thank you, for the presentation. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. We can move on to the next presentation. Um, the title thank is Space Fit Simulation thank you, thank of Power so Tracking in corro uh, Corroded okay, RCB. Um, yeah, uh, can you hear me? Thank you, thank you. Yes. <coughs> can you hear me? Yes, yes. RCB. Ah, okay. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm uh, Lorenzo Mingazzi from University of Parma, and together with uh, with Professor Francesco Freddi, we perform uh, the speed simulations uh, of cover cracking in corroded reinforced concrete uh, beams. Let me stream the, the screen. Can you see the, the presentation? Okay. So, uh, the main idea of our research is to develop a predictive model which uh, is capable to provide uh, accurate estimates of this uh, corrosion cracking phenomenon on poor reinforced concrete structures. So the, the manage, uh, so the the simulation is structured uh, by studying the three main phenomena which create which uh, form the carbonation corrosion cracking. So first uh, we study we we model the, the carbonation process via standard uh, diffusion reaction equation, uh, where the carbon dioxide enters through the pores of the concrete covers and uh, due to the chemical reactions. Uh, the carbonation of the uh, concrete the uh, takes place, the where uh, the and the main and effects the which uh, concern the, the, the corrosion process the is the change in the pH place, of the of the material, where, which. Uh, which uh, starts for the uh, hydrated concrete at high value around 13 and lowers to more neutral uh, values, uh, which lead to the depositation the of the steel rebars, and uh, the depositation of steel rebars uh, uh, 
which lead to a contrast formation and a swelling phenomenon uh, into the concrete, which has been modeled via the electrochemical equation. And uh, we obtain, therefore, the swelling of the, the, of the steel rebar due to the rust formation, which has been used as a loading parameter for the mechanical problem. Um, where uh, we modeled the formation of prox into the concrete cover via the phase field model for brick fracture. In particular, we used a formulation which uh, used the, the swelling of the rebar obtained from the corrosion process as a loading parameter, and uh, we applied the damage field only to the positive part of the concrete strain energy, so we can actually accurate model the the cracking phenomenon and the spalling as well. So we studied uh, two main, we studied two numerical tests. The first one is a double side diffusion test where carbon dioxide uh, um, enters the square concrete specimen with a CRE bar placed in the center from the left and the bottom side of the specimen. And uh, here we can see the results of the numerical simulation, where on the left side we have the carbon dioxide profile, on the central panel we have the carbonation, pro uh, the carbonation profile, while on the right side we see the phase field. As we can see, the carbonation profiles um, respect the environmental condition we set for the for the numerical test, and, we can see, and uh, we can see that the phase field approach to, brick, to brittle fracture is capable to correctly describe the effects of the of the different environmental condition affecting our specimen. As we can see, the cracks uh, uh, nucleate and uh, evolve towards the sides from which the the carbon dioxide enters the, the specimen. Uh, the second test we perform, we took the same domain. However, we introduced Use the notch on the bottom side of the specimen to see the different uh, effects, the, to see the effect that cracks, uh, that pre existing cracks or defects into the, into the concrete cover uh, could affect the, the simulation and the results of, uh, of the model proposed. As we can see, the, the carbonation profile obviously follows the different uh, geometry of the specimen. To, of the specimen, so it changes accordingly. And uh, moreover, the phase field, uh, uh, the crux pattern, uh, also follows the different, uh, also follows the changes into the environmental condition. In fact, uh, we can see that the crux uh, changes accordingly to the carbonation profiles and uh, reach to the to the external sur surface of the specimen uh, earlier. We can, I can, I don't have the video. But uh, uh, in the in the full presentation, uh, it can be seen how the the timing changes and uh, to a more aggressive uh, behavior of the of the carbonation corrosion cracking phenomenon. So to conclude, uh, we developed a model which uh, catches important aspects of the of this problem we studied. In particular, uh, the effect of the environmental conditions are uh, are accounted. Uh, moreover, the material properties changes are introduced, um, for example, for the change in porosity, for the different material properties uh, of the materials. The rebar swelling is introduced uh, and used as a loading parameter instead of an uh, imposed displacement on, uh, on the steel rebar. And the physical method uh, provided uh, um, results which are affected, uh, which are actively affected by the, the different material and uh, uh, environmental conditions we set for the different tests. Uh, we are still working on the on the on this on this model. We have to fine tune the parameter. We want to add a rust layer to model the effective presence of rust and its effect on the, on the behavior of the of the concrete. Uh, we want to account for limited limiting currents so find to better represent the corrosion process. And we want to, we would like to extend the, the model to to consider for pitting corrosion phenomenon instead of a generalized corrosion due to the carbonation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Um, very, very nicely done work. And I enjoyed seeing these animations showing the cracking, the Thank you. concrete, considering both the environmental effects. Um, uh, moisture penetration or let's say the corrosion at the same time 
um, I have a question. Um, what do you think? How do you think you can use this uh, simulating tool that you have to have a um, somehow I have a predictive a tool uh, to predict the time of uh, this uh, process to happen. Yeah, that's uh, that's the main. Uh, that's the final uh, for the final objective of this this research. So we want to create a model which uh, you can input the environmental condition, the material properties, and uh, you can get an estimate from which you can say, okay, in that amount of years, uh, the the cracking phenomenon yeah, will take place from and uh, by changing the parameters of your materials maybe by adding different uh, uh, materials into the concrete paste into the cement paste you can see if, if uh, there's benefits or not into the concrete paste and by doing so so yeah the idea is to provide a numerical model which can actually predict the more than predict that so, can so give accurate yeah, estimates of the model which can actually of the concrete uh, of the carbonation uh, corrosion cracking phenomenon uh, sorry uh, from the audience uh, does anyone have any question uh, related to this presentation uh, from the audience, uh, does anyone have any I have questions? one question. This is actually not uh, my field of research. It's mm -hmm. a little bit more civil, um, uh, uh, civil for me to get inside, but the I question may sound silly. But uh, 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 let's say if we want to prevent this uh, corrosion that is happening around these bars, the question may sound silly. Uh, what do you uh, think? I, I know it's not directly related uh, to your research, but maybe based on your uh, experience, you can give uh, an indication thing. What do you think is a better solution to prevent it? To apply a coating on the bars itself, or apply a coating on the finished reinforced concrete beam? Uh, I would say on the concrete, the mainly because applying coating the to the bar, it may affect the bonding between the, the concrete and the bar, the and uh, that would lead maybe to, to the, bar, the bonding, the bonding between from the, the from the material, which could be even more dangerous uh, the for the structural bonding elements. Bonding but that's just uh, from the material, which could be my guess. I, I don't. Uh, I didn't investigate the uh, that elements, kind of aspect of the uh, of the of this problem like because I I, uh, I focus more on the numerical part. But if it's possible and it doesn't uh, this problem because I, I, if we if we can get the same part, results at the end by applying coating to the rebar and to the external surface of the concrete. Uh, I would I I'd prefer to apply to the concrete. It could be damaged from external action, but uh, it might not. Uh, but in the end, uh, it doesn't affect the bond between the concrete and the steel rebar, which for me is way important, especially for uh, like beams or elements where traction is a is an important part, especially for uh, for the element. Okay. Thank you very much. We still have time uh, if there is any question regarding this research. I initially had uh, a point to ask you about add, uh, having these additives in the concrete. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's uh, quite common to, to hear people adding, add, uh, for example, the glass fiber here. Mm -hmm. Uh, or even more than that, uh, having these common, steel uh, wires adding, uh, that are chopped into small pieces in the concrete. Uh, but then you already mentioned that, that uh, it is uh, a future step that, that you're going to study. Yeah, uh, yeah we. The, the idea is you, you have your that, like from is, uh, the the, the design of the structural yeah, element. You can take the section and uh, add in the different uh, materials, different uh, additive into the cement paste. Uh, and you can model the, uh, I mean, they, their um, materials, different uh, their chemical uh, reactions with uh, with carbon dioxide and with the different uh, air pollutants, which can uh, enter the the the, the, the concrete cover uh, can be modeled by via the reaction system like diffusion reaction equation system, which are standard uh, standard equation and. Uh, it can be introduced into into the formulation without uh, 
or uh, without any difficulties. And, uh, it can be produced into, okay. into the formulation Thank you. without... Uh, Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we are going to move on to the next presentation now. Uh, the topic of the next presentation is stress state of an elastic rectangular domain under steady load. The topic of the next presentation is any of the two presenters uh, available now under steady load. The topic of the next presentation is any of the two presenters uh, available now? Mr. Weisfeld? Um, is any of the two presenters uh, available now? Mr. Weisfeld? Um, okay, we can move on to the next presentation and if the previous presenter is available, we can present afterwards. Okay, we can so the, the last presentation from this uh, session is titled Fatigue Damage Accumulation in Laminated Carbon so Epoxy Plastics. The last presentation from this uh, session uh, is titled Fatigue Damage uh, Accumulation in Laminated Carbon Epoxy Plastics. Yes, yes. Plastics. Okay. Uh, now I have to uh, share my uh, uh, window. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, now I have to share my Okay, uh, can you uh, see the presentation? Yes. Okay, okay thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Salmonov. I'm a student of Perm National Research Pedotechnic University. Okay, thank you very much. And the topic Hello, of everyone. my uh, report my is, is Fatigue Daniel Damage Accumulation in Laminated Carbon Epoxy Plastics University. Thank you very much. And the topic Hello, of my The uh, purpose of this work is, is to find experimental data on the change of the elastic characteristics, characteristics of layered uh, carbon reinforced uh, fiber polymers as the fatigue damage accumulates. The object of the study is standard samples uh, made up in directional carbon epoxy fiber with different layering schemes. You can see them on the slide. Carbon epoxy fiber with different layering schemes. You can see them on the slide. Uh, the samples were subjected to fatigue tests under cyclic tension with a constant uh, amplitude. The test of uh, each sample was uh, subjected to stopped several times under cyclic tension stages to execute experimental model analysis and non-destructive uh, inspection uh, of the appeared uh, defects. Uh, uh, the found natural uh, frequencies uh, were used to solve the inverse uh, problem of uh, identifying uh, the elastic uh, parameters of the laminated uh, laminate one layer to Young's model, shear model, plus and Poisson's ratio. But uh, we have a few problems with Poisson's ratio. We hope that we can solve that uh, task in the future. Um, that's why uh, now I can uh, show the results only with the young models and share model. As a result, uh, the dependence of these parameters on the related fatigue life were obtained. Uh, here on the slide, you can see uh, the graphs in the dimension with quantities. Uh, here on the slide, you uh, can see uh, these dependencies the together the with the results of non-destructive destruct uh, testing can be used to describe the process uh, the of fatigue damage accumulation and uh, uh, for, for the subsequent development of methods for the fatigue life prediction. And, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm ready to answer your question. For the life prediction. And, uh, uh, thank, you very much. thank you for your presentation. Uh, so, I have one question regarding the fatigue testing that you performed. Uh, you mentioned that you have uh, used 40 hertz. I have one question yes. regarding the for fatigue loading, and you mentioned that uh, it didn't cause in a raise in the temperature. More than uh, 
we uh, saw the incre increasing the temperature of uh, the samples during the testing, uh, but uh, not in all type of samples. Uh, sometimes we use the special stuff to cool the uh, cooling the sample during the testing with the air. Yeah, but uh, uh, was there any specific reason that you chose this number? Uh, is it related to the application that uh, this company is being used? Uh, was there any specific uh, this number, uh, the frequency. Uh, is it related to the application uh, uh, that this company is being used? Uh, uh, that's uh, the frequency uh, of uh, vibration yes. system. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, we can't choose that. That's the that's number the of the system. Of, uh, vibration yes. system. Okay. Uh, uh, it's uh, the resonance uh, uh, process. Number of the system. Yeah, because usually uh, even within uh, the range the of, the let's say, going from one hertz to four hertz is usually okay for composites because but uh, even, even changing it to 10 going from you will hertz see uh, significant really significant change in the composite property and then 40 even so that's quite large so I, I think your samples were quite thin so maybe yes, yes. Uh, we, we have uh, some more testing so with the much more thick samples there we saw uh, extremely big much more uh, extremely high temperature uh, but with uh, our uh, samples they were maybe two millimeters uh, we didn't have any troubles with that but with any big trouble our uh, samples they were uh, from the audience uh, is there any question regarding this presentation I see that uh, Professor Correa uh, has also audience, shared uh, his contact with you, Danny. And uh, I see that uh, yeah. Professor Correa can, uh, has also can be in contact with him regarding your research. Uh, if there is no question, uh, we can I can ask again the previous uh, presenter. If there is no question, any uh, of the authors from the uh, one to the last presentation state uh, stress the state of an elastic presenter. rectangular no domain any under steady load. From the one to the last presentation, Mr. Weisfeld of an elastic or Mr. Pojilenkov. Is there any of the two Weiss presenters here? Of an or Mr. Okay. Thank you very much. I think yeah, we can close this session. Here? And uh, we had two more uh, presentations okay. from the previous sessions Thank that they can much. start uh, can shortly. Close this session. Here? And uh, we had two more uh, presentations from the previous sessions Thank that they much. can start uh, can shortly. Close this session. Here? And, uh, okay. Thank you, Jarad. I would like uh, to invite again. Uh, Okay, thank you, Gerard. Professor Ashimi, I would like uh, uh, that again. Uh, okay, the title of the, of the presentation is uh, uh, Design on and Manufacturing uh, of uh, 3D Printer Filaments uh, Extruder. The title of the presentation is uh, uh, Design on and okay. Manufacturing of uh, 3D Printer Filaments Extruder. Can you hear me? Yes. Is, uh, design Okay, if you want to present uh, um, your research in a few minutes, okay. if you want to present uh, it, is, it is clear now. Okay, in a few minutes, okay. can you hear me? Present, yes, uh, it, is, it is clear now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, but uh, there is a microphone open. And the ladies. Uh, Hello, everyone. Yes, but uh, 
He is speaking. The sound is much clearer. Yes, uh, close the microphone. Yes, uh, close the microphone. Can you hear me? Ashimi? It is clear now. Can you hear me? It sounds much clear. Ashimi? It is clear now. I can see your screen. Can see your screen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. Ladies, and hello. I wish that I wish. I wish you are okay. I'm very pleased to present to you my work, Design and Manufacturing of 3D Printer uh, Film Extrusion. Okay. However, it's about producing experimental sample for our research. Filament Extrusion was a solution to solve. However, it's about producing experimental sample for our research. The expensive price of uh, the filament used in our research, such the mechanical property and uh, chemical, uh, chemical composition of filament and taking waste plastic as well. This work starts by designing the chemical composition of filament by designing uh, the filament extruder parts by parts using a computer-aided design software. Respecting to uh, the chemistry and specimen rules, using then assembled all the assembled all the pa uh, all the parts which forms the, fi uh, the final uh, design of the extruder. Assembled all the assembled all the parts. The final uh, step of the, uh, this work, uh, the realization of the test bed. by manufacturing uh, all the parts, form the, the final test. Bed. The machine, as you saw in the video, worked perfectly, and the uh, part was extruded with uh, two different uh, diameters. The machine, as you saw in the video, after this, uh, after this, uh, and according to the, the standard used the test uh, of the filaments, mechanical tests and tests were performed to compare the mechanical behavior and the, uh, and the extruder filament, uh, the filaments, and the real one used uh, in the automatic industry. And, uh, the, goal, the goal of this study was uh, investigate the mechanical property uh, produced uh, by our uh, extruder. The goal of this study was uh, as a result of uh, this study. Uh, the mechanical properties of the option uh, are manufacturing uh, of uh, our manufacturing uh, filaments will consider uh, consider uh, satisfac satisfactory uh, our time uh, and cost has been uh, reduced the work uh, for low uh, manufacturing filament extruder time has been uh, developed the mechanical Thank you. Did you finish? To, yes. Did you finish to present your work? Yes. yes but, okay. uh, Any question or comments? Finish to, yes. Did you finish to present your work? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you compare the results obtained by filament uh, in, obtained by using filaments uh, produced by other extruders? Can you repeat, please? Did you compare the results obtained by using filaments produced with other extruders? No, we different just, from yours. No, we just, we just compare the, the filaments of our extruder uh, with the, uh, the, proper, the mechanical property of uh, of the raw material in the and the mechanic uh, in the uh, automotive industry. Okay, and can you highlight me the novelty of the design extruder? 
Which is the novelty? Okay. Can you highlight me the novelty of the design extruder? It's uh, not a novelty. It's uh, just a test bed. Uh, test bed. Uh, uh, Mr. 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 Taufik, uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm one of the two authors. Just uh, I want to highlight uh, Mr. Uh, about uh, the extruder, which is uh, which is produced uh, in our uh, projects. It's uh, we're, we're comparing uh, newly extruded uh, filament with the uh, industrial one, with uh, the one we find in commerce and in automotive and industry. So we are checking if we are producing a good filament or not. And also the novelty of our uh, of our research is to to find out and to explain. Uh, uh, the control of parameters uh, while uh, producing uh, the filament is important to, find to control the characteristic of the material. Uh, That's why we are producing uh, to those filaments. So we are controlling the parameters, the temperature, and uh, the other stuff. So we'll see that in the other presentation of modern, so of modern novelty. And uh, the about the extruder we are producing, stuff, so it's a complete design from the manufacturing, from the computer design, until having the filament. And uh, by controlling all the parameters, we are finding that uh, the, filament, the produced filament is given. Uh, we are using in the printer, the 3D, 3D printer, and we are characterizing the specimens in order to, 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 compi to compare with industrial filament. Uh, that's we are uh, gaining in we are uh, gaining in time and in material. So we are producing our own material and we are controlling the produced production parameters in order to have a good material. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the clear? last presentation uh, uh, is entitled Modeling and Control of 3D Filaments Extruder and is presented by uh, Nabol C. Modeling and Control of 3D filament extruder and is presented by uh, Nabol C. Modeling and control of 3D filament extruder and is presented by uh, Nabol C. Um, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Nabol C to present the last presentation. Like invite, uh, okay. Dr. Nabol C. To present the last so, can you hear me? Okay. To present the sorry. So, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Sure. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I'm. Uh, I have the honor me? and the pleasure to present you my work on the modeling and the control okay. of the 3D filament so, extruder machine. Uh, uh, so, uh, our job is to, to design and build an extruder machine to produce experimental samples for our tool. So as well as uh, to ensure uh, the reliability and conformity of the filaments by controlling the temp temperature in order to meet the raw material at a precise controlled temperature to extract a good quality of filament. As a result, the temperature control should be to extract a good quality of filament. The temperature control should be made uh, in a uh, can you can you see uh, please the presentation control should be made uh, in a can you see a slide of your presentation can you see uh, please the uh, okay. different uh, yes have a mistake okay they have a mistake uh, uh, so uh, the extra machine that we have built and the uh, uh, it's illustrated as follow, as well as the wiring of the control parts composed of a heating collar to meet the material, a sensor to detect the temper temperature measured in the heating collar, a static relay which cuts off the power supply if the measured temperature exceeds the set point, uh, and finally a digital PID corrector. If the measured so uh, about identification system, uh, first it is necessary to obtain the identification of this represents the close approximation to the real system. 
so to, so to identify the transfer function of the heating cooler, we made an experiment to measure the temperature of the heating cooler with a millimeter as a function of the time. Then we applied the Broida model the temperature uh, the model, uh, to extract the transfer function of the Broida model. Then we had the, the block diagram uh, of the open loop uh, system on Simulink uh, software to compare the real system to the response of the system generated by the identification method by Broida model. As just shown in the figure below, the curve of identification system using the Broida method obtained the best response very close to the curve of the real system. Uh, on the results, the, as you see, the basic structure of the collector PID is as follows. We trip uh, on the key, the constant uh, of the proportional the TI, constant, the of constant of the integral, is constant of derivative. The dynamic of the thermal of a thermal system is of the so though it is interesting to simulate the system on a tool like uh, simulating software. Then we made, as you see, the block diagram of the closed loop system on Simulink. The PID block of Simulink has an option uh, named Tune, which allows to calculate the parameters key P, key I, and key D. Then by exploiting, the, by exploiting this option Tune on Simulink, we can adjust the we can adjust the, the, these parameters uh, and and respecting the requirements of, of the specification. Uh, for this, we adjusted on the graph to have the desired response of the system enclosed. Thank you for your attention. For this, we adjusted on the graph to have the desired response. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Thank you for your attention. For this, we adjusted on the Okay. I have uh, um, two questions for you. Yes. Uh, can you explain me what represents the quantities uh, involved in the correct corrector uh, PID relationship that is shown on the left hand side? For example, what uh, the parameter KP left hand side? In this slide, okay. for example, there Trip. is a, um, the if you can yes. explain uh, me the sure. quantities involved in this Trip. relationship. If you sure, yes. uh, they, they have uh, three basic parameters of a PID corrector, R, P, I, and D. The I action cancels sure. the static uh, error, have, uh, while the D action ensures the system speed, and the P action uh, affects the response time. Why do the action ensure the system? Okay. And did you compare the, action, uh, the time versus, the versus time. temperature curve with those obtained by using filaments produced with other extruders? With those obtained by using then, so to do, to do this method, uh, the Broida method should have a, a, a system a identification a identification of a system that is is approximation or close to the real system then can can, can i uh, can i uh, exploit this this uh, this method the broad the broad method then can, can, can i uh, okay. can i uh, thank you again this, this, uh, this, this session is now finished and uh, I hope uh, all of you have enjoyed this section. Um, we see at 2 p.m. Uh, for uh, this section number three. Thank you very much. We see at 2 p.m. for this section number three. Thank you very much. Thank you.